And with that, we head over to our next presentation by Andre, and he's with me here in the studio. So welcome, Andre. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Yes. Welcome First to. Time in the studio. Yes, you've been with us twice. Once on through internets, and uh, once you were with us when we were at Kibra, and uh, now in the studio, and you're gonna do the went. Go JS diagrams in pure script. Yeah, so thanks, Magnus, for the introduction. It's good to be here. Uh, I'm going to be presenting a library that I authored, went while working at Adabit, um, an FP consultant. And um, it's all about bringing uh, GoJS diagrams to the pure script uh, setting. And um, a brief overview of the the structure of these slides is going to be um, of the of the whole talk actually is there's going to be a few slides um, going over gojs what it is how it works this is not a gojs talk um, uh, directly I mean obviously it ends up being that way because this is a the library interacts with the with gojs so so um, so deeply uh, but the focus of the library, I the, of, the, of the talk, is presenting the, the library went. And, um, and in that spirit of showcasing the library, most of the talk, the, the second, second and third thirds, um, are going to be live coding, what I hope that uh, went development uh, looks like. And we're going to write up a simple interactive diagram to that end. Um, so what is GoJS? It's a framework. It's a library so big that it's called a framework, I guess, for creating dynamic and interactive diagrams totally progr programmatically in, um, in JavaScript. And um, it's, it's, a, it's a big framework. It's been around for a while. And why GoJS? Why is it good? Well, uh, I'll just show some uh, some. Uh, some of the samples from from their website of stuff that can be done with it. So you can have something that is as simple uh, as uh, Conway's Game of Life. There's some HTML here to get everything running and get the buttons in and everything. Um, but this, as as uh, surprising as that may seem, this is just a, a diagramming library running this stuff. So it can be as simple as this, or as uh, complicated and over the top as this floor planner, which I think is the most advanced uh, example that they have. Um, so the library is extremely expressive, extremely powerful. You can do a lot with it. And um, yeah, I hope it's not going to take much more convincing than that, that it's a, it's a worthwhile um, piece of software. Um, and how does it work? So it it m is very very heavy on the uh, object orientation. It supports TypeScript, even though it's 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 a um, the it's a JavaScript library. It, it it exports I think pretty much every method and function as a TypeScript type uh, type signature. Um, and it de it depends on a canvas and a div to render the diagrams that. Uh, the, the things you you saw before and these slides that you're seeing right now. Um, the once a div has a has a has a canvas in it, you give that div's ID to your JavaScript code to render a diagram, and GoJS is off to the races. So the most basic concepts in the library are diagrams and graph objects. So diagrams contain graph objects. More specifically, they contain nodes. And um, the things you see rendered on screen are usually just a, a big graph, as disguised as they may be. Um, so uh, again, this 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 uh, talk is not going to be about uh, GoJS directly, but I'm still going to give an overview of, of some of the some of the concepts. And the graph objects are the building blocks. So here is a picture also from the from the official documentation showing the the gr the class structure of what a graph graph object is so it can be a picture it can be just a text block a 
shape, which is like a generic figure, um, and then it can be a panel. And the thing about panels is that they could contain other graph objects. Um, and this will hopefully become more clear as uh, we show a little more code. And um, a part is a panel. Uh, nodes and links are parts, and groups are nodes. So groups, groups are a way of like creating little diagrams within the diagrams. Um, uh, yeah, well, again, we'll show some of that. Uh, so here's another visualization of GoJS's structure. And this slide is meant to overwhelm you. Don't expect to understand everything you're looking at here. You can, uh, you can stare at it for a, few, for a few minutes on the YouTube video and just pause and look. But uh, in a nutshell, like the, yeah, so the, the alpha, the, the string alpha that you're seeing here is a graph object, which is a text block. The thing surrounding the alpha is a shape, that is a, a, a figure of a rounded rectangle. Um, and then the entire thing is a node. So this, um, because a node is a panel, it contains other graph objects, in this case, a text block and a shape. Um, yeah, these two no nodes are linked, etc. cetera. Uh, and again, blazing through the, the GoJS concepts, it's, it's, a, it's a big library and it gets conceptually pretty advanced, but um, to jump into the deep end and show how it's usually done, uh, the way it's usually done is via uh, no templates, models, and bindings. These are the, the, three, the, the three main concepts here. So a no template is, uh, is just a node, except that it gets its data, it gets its information from a so-called model. Um, so this is, this is usual, uh, the, the usual model view pattern that, that we see in other uh, frameworks and, and, and languages. Um, so the no template here is defining the visual tree. So this, is, this is a JavaScript, by the way. The no template is, is defining, uh, um, it's defined as a node. That node is of a, its layout type is auto. Don't worry about what that means. Um, and then it contains two other graph objects, a shape. And the shape is going to get its fill property from uh, the color property of whatever node, whatever, uh, 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 it's, it's going to get the, the, the color property from the data in the model. So this is, it's, it's what you're seeing here. So the, the diagrams model is set to be this node data array, and this node data array has records, and each record contains the necessary uh, information to, to um, draw up the, uh, the node template. And this is going to render to this little diagram here. Um, so the, the alpha node here is two graph objects. So there's the, the, the alpha text and the, the text block and the, the rounded rectangle shape. And whoops, uh, you're not supposed to see that yet. Um, and as you see here, the, the, the color for this first one, the, the one that has key alpha, is light blue. And uh, the reason that the text is rendering as, as, as alpha there is because there's a binding from the key property in the, in the model to the text property of the class text block. Um, so, so that's what's going on. And um, this is all fine, but you will notice that there's a lot of room for type safety. So these bindings and, and records, like when we're setting these default properties on the, on the, on the node, these are just, this, they're just plain JavaScript objects. Um, there's no, the, you know, there's no, there's no type checking happening at this level. And uh, the things that are being bound are just strings. Like, there's just strings flying around everywhere. Um, these, really, they're not just any strings. I mean, the ha creating a binding from the property color only makes sense in a context where, um, uh, where this node template is going to be rendered in a diagram that has for a model um, something like a, an array that contains the, the color property right and and uh, fill is the same the the same way like fill is a property of shape and text is a property of text block um so there's there's a lot of safety that could be added here and, and runtime errors that can be prevented um and that brings us to pure script 
which basically asks and answers the question, hey, what, what if JavaScript were Haskell? Um, this, uh, the, thing, the code on the left is an example of, of some went code recreating the exact same diagram you saw on the previous slide. Um, the auto, uh, auto fill and color are now type level strings. Um, and that allows us to, to, uh, to overcome some of the type safety issues before. And the, now I can pretty much answer very succinctly, succinctly why this library, why, why create an interface to, to GoJS from PureScript. Well, there's, there's basically two answers. One is to make GoJS directly available to PureScript apps. So if you have a PureScript application now and you want to use um, GoJS's features, which I hope I've conveyed to you are worthwhile, it's a, it's, a, it's a good library, you can't unless you create a, a, a ton of bindings, which Went does provide. Um, and on the other side, you can, you can improve the experience of creating GoJS diagrams uh, by leveraging PureScript's type system. So uh, that's, that's what led to the conclusion of this, of, of creation of this library. So here's an idea for a, for a diagram. Um, there's a very visual math concept called polynomial functors. And um, they, they look like these little, these little uh, forests of trees here. And they form what's called in math a uh, category, uh, which means that they can be uh, mapped to one another. So here you have two little polynomial functors, P and Q, and this is a mapping between them. So uh, in this one, the, the first uh, little tree go, is mapped to A here. So this one is labeled 1. So 1 goes to A, and then the, the stuff on top of, of A goes back here, back to 1. 2 goes to A, and stuff on, on top of A goes to, goes to the stuff on top of 2. Um, polynomial functors are a very extremely deep rabbit hole, and they're a subject that's very, that's near and dear to my heart. Uh, so I was thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice to be able to interact with this instead of just looking at these static pictures? Um, and let's see. That, uh, yes, it would be nice. So let's try our hand at coding this with Went. And this is where the, the talk is going to slow way down, and we're going to be writing up a, a little diagram um, and debugging and, you know, words and all uh, right now. So I'm going to be switching back and forth from code to, to the browser here where this stuff is being hot compiled. And I'm just going to change this. First, I'm going to show you what the diagram looks like when it's finished. Uh-oh. Uh yeah, PureScript sometimes just decides to recompile the world. Uh, I have paid a lot of attention to uh, the patterns in this, and I've looked around, but I can't figure it out. It just seems to be in a bad mood sometimes. Um, so, yeah, now we are going to show what this finished poly, uh, polynomial functor mapping diagram looks like. And uh, you have the poly little polynomial P and little and another little polynomial Q, and then you can create the mapping interactively, like this. Um, so you can see that this uh, the stuff on top gets uh, gets on this side. These are are just inputs, and on this side they're outputs, and vice versa for the for the the bottom of the of the diagram. So let's try to recreate this from from scratch. Uh, this is going to be the, the rest of the, of the presentation, is writing this up. So let's go back to our code and go to this poly new fresh mo module. Sometimes, uh, full disclosure, uh, so you're not surprised, sometimes I am going to be cheating at, and looking at the, the finished version um, uh, because it, it can get somewhat involved. But I will, I'll explain everything that's happening. So right now there's a blank diagram. And... Uh, let's see, let's try to address this. So uh, I've set up just a little bit of, of, uh, of um, um, initial, just a, a little setup here. So init is producing an effect, which is just creating the diagram and rendering it. This is the, the div ID, this is diag, and this is a, a, a monadic context in which the diagram is being, is being built. So I've set its model here to 
to be a certain type of model with an empty node data and an empty link data. So there's no data, there's no, there's no um, nodes, and they're not linked to each other. So everything is empty here. Um, and uh, yeah, so the node data is just this array, uh, array of p concatenated with the array of q. That gives you a hint that these these two are going to have uh, different emphases, these, these, these different parts of the array of record data. And the same goes for P links and, uh, and Q links. So the link data is just the concatenation of that. Um, okay, so first step, let's just try adding some, some, uh, some node data to see what gets, what shows up on the, on the screen. Let's add here uh, 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 a record that has a key of one. And this is going to complain already because our our type of our node data type is saying, well, this is the, the this is going to be an array of blank records because no data has no has nothing uh, attached to it. So I can't match a record of type key of string to to um, to a blank uh, blank row type. So let's just say that our node data now can contain a string, and uh, let's see what shows up here. All right, so there's a tiny little one there you can see in the middle. So that's good news. Let's add a few more a few more nodes to this array here. Um, so I'm going to call this one one a, one b. And now I see there's three nodes. They're looking pretty plain right now. Um, let's also add some nodes to uh, to Q, so the other polynomial. So this one is going to be A. A one. A two. Let's see what shows up. Yep, as expected. A bunch of nodes flying around. Um, but now let's let's give this these nodes a look. So what we're going to do now is just uh, alter uh, our node template. So we're going to we're going to give our, our nodes a, a visual tree. So we're going to say here that node template is a make node template of node data. So this is the stuff that can be bound, and this is the ultimate type that it produces. It's going to produce a uh, backend node. So we're going to make our node here b so this is just an empty a uh, blank node template and then we just have to add it uh, to our diagram and give it a, a category so we're going to call this the visible node template uh, whoops this is equal yeah. Oh, there it goes again. It's compiling a whole bunch of stuff, but I'm not even gonna. It's it's fine because this this node template is totally empty, so it's not gonna show anything right now. So let's uh, the 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 nodes are just n not none of them are gonna be visible. So let's give this a shape, and we're gonna give the node template a circle shape, and do pure unit inside the circle. Now we can remove this outer pure unit because this returns unit already. And we still don't see anything. And the reason is because we need another key in our node data. Uh, the node data doesn't know, each of the node data doesn't know um, what it's supposed to look like, like which of the node templates it's supposed to, to uh, attach itself to. And the way we address this is by adding this special key to the node data called category. Now all of these guys are going to complain. So let's just add a category. And the category is going to be the name of our um, of our node template that we added before. Uh, whoops, category. So let's see what this looks like. All right, now we have six balls, uh, and that's obviously not very and like illuminating uh, what I'm gonna do next is put these put this shape inside of a panel 
this panel is going to be of type spot, which is a panel that you can set the alignment of the pieces of the graph objects inside of it manually. Um, and I'm also going to give this a text. So now we, we have a, a, whoops, panel. Now we have a decision to make here. So where is the data for each of these graph objects going to, to come from? Um, well, in the case of, this, this sh uh, in the, case of the, the circle, we, we do know that we're going to want to give this a color. Like we want, to, we want different nodes to have different colors. So we're going to create a binding. And now we're using type level strings to fill. So the fill property of the shape class is going to come from the color property in our uh, in our data, and this is going to complain because well, I uh, this is adding the type safety that we were requesting before. Well, I can't add uh, I can't bind to a color from with because I'm uh, the, the only things I know that exist in this type are these two um, these two keys keys here category and key. Um, so let's add color to our no data so that the model can provide this data and now all of these guys are going to complain that's fine let's give this a nice dark green all right and where is our text data going to come from well we probably yet another um, yet another place but really we can get away with just uh, binding stuff to binding the text property to key and these nothings here are uh, uh, these these extra parameters here are just function transformations that we can give to transform stuff that's coming from the the model data to the property if they're of different types or they need to be changed in some way but uh, in our case, we just want to take the, the values as is, so we just pass nothing there. And let's see what this looks like. All right, so now you see a dark green with a... If you squint, you can see the text is, that is inside. And, um, and th these circles are too big. So we're going to do two things now. We are going to set the desired size property of these circles to be just 20 and uh, for height and 20 for width so they're going to be a little smaller and then the text block instead of being on top of the of the circle like that we're gonna we're gonna um, set its alignment set their alignment to be in this alignment is a spot and spots are they 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 go from uh, from zero to one. So z uh, zero point five is halfway across the x-axis, um, and uh, one point three is more or less fine. Is going to be um, a little over the 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 height of the of the circle, uh, or of the of the panel that this that this uh, this graph object is is exists in. That's why we wanted a, a spot-based panel, and then there's no need for offsets. So now we should see smaller circles with uh, text underneath them. Yeah, there they are. And let's make this yet a little more uh, distant, 1.4. Yeah, that looks good to me. Um, okay, so that's the... That's the, the, the visible node template. Um, but the, the, the name visible should be a hint that some of these nodes are going to be invisible. Um, if we go back to the finished product, um, or actually, before I show that, let me just let me add a link. Let me add a link between the nodes so you can see what that looks like. For that, I'm going to just add some, uh, some keys to our link data, which is going to contain with the the information about which which nodes are linked to which which other nodes so here we're going to say from uh so in p we want from one 
to uh, 1a, so that's one link. And then we want from 1 to 1b. And let's do the same thing for, uh, for q. So this is from a to a1, and then from a to uh, a2. All right, so you can see what this looks like now. So th these links are these links exist, but in the finished diagram, um, the the arrows were kind of looked like they were they were floating around. So if I go back to main and change the init function to come from the finished diagram again, you'll see that these arrows here are just kind of floating. There there are nodes there. Um, but they're not visible. We want the arrows to kind of float like this. Um, so we're going to need, for this, we're going to need a new node template. Uh, node template invisible. It's going to have the same type as our other one. I'm going to just uh, reformat this a, a little bit here. Yeah, that's a bit nicer to me. Um, and then let's make the note, the invisible note template um, blank. And now let's see what happens. Well, nothing changes, and that's because uh, we haven't added the invisible template. Let's call it invisible. And this is going to be this make node template uh, monadic value. And now, of course, there's still going to 1a and 1b, which are the ones we want to make invisible, they're still going to be visible because we haven't changed their category. So let's go ahead and do that. And there it goes, compiling everything again. This is happening more often now during the live talk, of course. Um, uh, but yeah, that's that's going to have pretty much the 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 effect that you expect. Um, and okay, so now we have a bunch of arrows floating around, but obviously this. The, the layout of this of this uh, diagram doesn't look like what we want. Um, we want the notes. We want these notes to be grouped together somehow. Uh, with, if you if you remember what the finished poly uh, diagram looks like, so let's go ahead and introduce groups. We're going to add a group template this time. So the group template, group template, no data. So because groups are nodes. Group. And we're going to have this group be vertical, actually, because we want the, the panels inside the group to be um, to go uh, to be organized top to bottom, and you'll see why. Um, so inside here, we're going to have an auto panel because we want stuff inside the group to be automatically or reorganized. And let's give this group a uh, let's give it let's give it let's give the, the panel inside the group a shape of a rounded rectangle. We're going to set one parameter in this rounded rectangle, which is going to be uh, well, parameter 1, which basically determines how, uh, for different figures, it determines different things. But for rounded rectangles, it determines how rounded the rectangle is. And we want it to be pretty rounded. Um, and then another thing that it's going to contain is placeholder which is just, it's a dummy graph object that has, the only point of it is, is to set padding, uh, uh, paddings on, uh, on groups. So this is our group, group template. Let's go ahead and add it to our diagram as well. Uh, add group template. We're going to give it the name of the empty string, which is going to make it the, the default 
uh, group template. And of course, this is not going to type check because no template invisible, which I just copy pasted, is a make no template, and we want a make uh, group template, um, which this one is. All right, so let's see what happened. Absolutely nothing. And the reason is because we have not told any of the nodes whether they are groups or not, or how to participate in a group or anything like that. Uh, so the way to do that is to add yet more keys to our node data, because some nodes are going to be groups, some nodes are not going to be groups. And uh, there's these two special, um, uh, special um, keys here is group determines whether the current node is a group um, and group is uh, the key of the node to which this this one belongs so now our arrays are going to complain yet again as they should because we want our code to be type correct um, and now let's just say that these guys groups are default and none of them is going to be a group. Okay? So none of the nodes that we have right now are going to be a group. These uh, group. And um, that makes sense, right? Because we want them to be grouped together, but individually each one of these nodes the two invisible ones here and this one are not groups uh, which means that we need yet another node here that is going to be the is going to be the group in the node array so let's go ahead and add that for uh, for P we're gonna call it P the category is now uh, uh, Oh, sorry, I made, a, I made a mistake here, actually. This, these empty group strings are going to now be, well, I guess not a mistake, but I just, uh, I, I, I didn't jump ahead when I meant to jump ahead. <laughs> but I'll address this now. So now, these groups are going to be contained within um, this first node here, because this one is going to be a group. So uh, all of these nodes are now going to be a part of uh, the group P, because this, this node has a, has a key P, and um, we're going to go ahead and set, set it to be a group. Um, I'm going to also preemptively change the color of the group to be light green, and, um, and we'll, we'll, that's not going to have any effect right now, but uh, the effect it's going to have is coming up. And this one is Q. Uh, Q, and this is correct that P is not a member of any of any group, and um, and the other ones are parts of uh, members of of P. Um, so let's see what happens with this change. All right, now you can see that things are grouped together, but the group looks pretty weird. Um, it's already uh, automatically resizing, but uh, we don't want this this black rectangular shape, obviously. So, in the group, we're just gonna do the same thing we did for uh, for the other node templates. Uh, we're going to bind um, bind the the our shapes fill property to the color property. in uh, our node data. So the group has no data like, like any other node. And um, this now gives us some nice looking groups. But uh, this, of course, still doesn't look like what we want. For one thing, they should be different colors. That's uh, trivial enough to, um, to change. Uh, oh, now this is a mistake. The category of the groups should be this. Uh, but it doesn't matter because the group template is is uh, pursued in a different place than the node templates are. So it just didn't find the category visible, and it defaulted to the default group, group category. Um, 
That's why it, it's, it still worked. <clears throat> um, yes, so the stuff still looks uh, uh, a little weird here. We want, the, we want these, these arrows to be going up. So let's go ahead and set another thing in the group, which is layout. So the layout is, um, is, uh, uh, is basically a thing that tells your, your, your graph how to, how to be organized. And we're going to give the, the group a layout that is called a tree layout. Um, so we're setting the property layout of the group, and the property is a monadic value. Uh, that defines how to create a layout. And uh, inside of this layout, I'm going to uh, jump ahead and show... Oh, actually, let me, show you how, let me show you how this looks right now. It's growing horizontally. We want the layout to be flipped. The way to do that is to set the uh, angle property. I'm going to go just set it to 270. And I'm also going to take this chance to uh, change the color of the Q related node. So this one is going to be pink. And let's change the, these to dark red. And now it's going to be really clear that they are in different groups with different data. And the trees are going to be standing up this time. There we go. We're getting pretty close. Um, there's still some, there's just some weird stuff, some weird stuff here. Like the, this, uh, this, the arrows, the, the, the link is looking a little strange to the, to the, the 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 line that's going up to the to the the top of the node here, um, and this brings us to our final template that we're going to set, which is the link template. Um, the link template is, uh, if you if you recall the, the class structure, links are um, uh, links are also uh, graph objects, and as such, they can have uh, they're they're actually panels, so they can have uh, uh, visual trees. Let's go ahead and add a visual tree for um, our link. So now, crucially, this is going to be attached to the, the, the things that can be bound inside the link template are the link data, not the node data. Um, link template is link. Uh, And then add the link as our defaults as well. Add link template. Get ahead of its complaint there. And now let's see what happens. We added a blank link template to our to our tree here, and that looks wrong. Obviously, now the now all the arrows are invisible. So we're going to add two shapes to this link to make it visible the way that we want. Uh, one is going to be uh, a neutral figure with the key thing that it has a stroke. It means it has some color. Um, and this shape is just going to follow the link along its path. Um, and the next shape we're going to add is uh, also none. And this shape is going to be going to have a special property set on it, which only makes sense inside of a, of a, of a link panel. And this, uh, this property is two arrow, and this is the two arrow called feather. That's the one we want. All right. Um, the link still looks the same as what we had before, kind of a bit too, um, too rough. So let's set some properties on the link itself now. So these, these sets are inside of the shape uh, monadic context. And we're now gonna, going to set the uh, Bezier curve on the link. That's going to make it look nice. Uh, well, a bit nicer anyway. Yeah, that's, that's a bit smoother. Um, and we are almost there, at least in, in terms of the visuals of this. Um, let's try to add uh, another, um, let's try to add another 
uh, tree to this this uh, polynomial here. So let's do two and two a two b. Um, same colors, of course, and then let's add some links um, to in in this uh, two tree. Let's just see what happens. All right, the tree is growing vertically. So the the tree the tree growing vertically is a property of the layout of our group template. Um, and that is easy enough to fix. We just got to make the arrangement horizontal. Um, I don't know if I've seen, I feel like I'm, it probably feels like I'm conjuring up properties and I just kind of know what they do. I mean, obviously I do because I've written up this, this diagram several times now. Um, but this just comes from experience with the library and, and having an intuition for what uh, each of these properties mean. Okay, so that is looking uh, better. It looks pretty much like what we want it to look. Um, and um, the last step here is to make this in, to make this uh, interactive. Like the our, our previous one, the, the the completed version had that nice way of creating mappings. And um, this is going to be the last step. And for this one, I'm going to cheat. I've managed to get all the way to the end of the presentation without cheating. But uh, this function, I am just going to steal it from the, the, the ready diagram. And then, don't worry, I'm going to explain everything it's doing. Um, so this is a function called a make port. So what it does is it takes a, it takes a spot and it um, creates a, it, 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 it creates a shape inside of a context where one is making a node which is what we're doing for all of, all of our, um, um, our node templates. Um, the only problem here is that this relies on this binding, which is of, uh, of this key input. And the key input doesn't exist in our, in our node data yet. And um, the, the thing is that this, this, these properties here, to linkable and from linkable of, uh, of uh, a shape, just say whether this shape is is uh, uh, w whether the, the, the shape in that this is being built on, uh, sorry, the two linkable and from linkable properties just say whether the shape is, um, w whether one can connect a, a link to it or not. And they are being fetched from the data because for different nodes, whether their inputs or outputs is going to be is going to be different, right? Like on the on in our case for the queues, we want their the the top side to be outputs, and the bottom side to be um, to be inputs, and vice versa for for p. So the the, the green one is going to be output on the bottom, input on the top. Uh, so let's go ahead and add this input key to our node data. Input is going to be a boolean, and now all of these guys are going to break as we know they like to, and we like it. We, we love compiler errors in this house. Um, so let's think about it. Uh, the input key doesn't matter at all for the group because the group is not binding to it, so it just it's not going to do anything with that. Um, uh, but for, for, so yes, let's, let's think about it. For Q, um, uh, the bottom a is going to be is going to be an input and the tops are not going to be inputs this is what we're showing here uh, and these guys are also breaking because they don't have the input keys input uh, false but for um, for the p polynomial this stuff this is all going to be reversed so um, the one and two are not are uh, not going to be inputs, and uh, and the uh, the invisible nodes are right. So now we're not getting the compilation error. I can go back to 
finishing the explanation of this of this function. So this is just setting it's just setting a bunch of properties on on shapes like we've done uh, multiple times before. Um, for align for alignment, it's taking the 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 argument that we give to this function, putting that in the alignment um, to show where it shows up in the panel to, to determine where where it shows up in the panel. Um, and it's reg normally it's transparent, um, when, but when the mouse enters, we unsafely set, and this uh, set unsafe just means that this is running entirely in the effect um, monad, which for for the Haskell programmers out there, it's just I/O, uh, because this is running strictly on the JavaScript side. So this function is being sent to uh, it gets the, the what Wint does is it compiles it it compiles it to a JavaScript function using some some uh, type level uh, some type class stuff, um, and then assumes that the function it's running there is is effectful, and so that's that's what unsafe is, means here. And uh, when the mouse leaves, we set it set the port to back to being transparent. Um, this function is it it takes so this function takes an argument and creates something inside of the node context, but it's not being added to any place yet. And what we're going to do is add it to our both our node template invisible and our node tape net node template visible. Whoops. Make uh, port. So for for the visible node templates, we want the um, the alignment to be the bottom spot. And for the invisible, we want the alignment to be on the top spot. And now we get our interactability. Um, and this this node is now uh, an output. And the directions are correct here. So if I try to drag this to that, you can see that it only allows me to make this guy. Um, uh, it only it allows me to make this guy only uh, an input. Um, so that's great. A couple more things is that the 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 links here are looking a little weird. Uh, we want them to bend in the opposite direction, so let's address our uh, link template to do that. We're going to set the curviness property to be a negative number. It, this determines how curvy a, a, a curve is, uh, and making it negative just makes it bend, bend backwards to whatever direction it normally wants to bend. Um, all right, so now that looks better. And the final thing is just to add a little text to our, our group template. And uh, we come to why it's a vertical group at the end of the day. Um, so that they have, they have a nice little name on there. Um, so this is, we're going to be binding to, to the key. Uh, we want them to be named after the, their key. So Again, text comes from key, nothing, nothing. And uh, we're also going to set a nice font for this, uh, for this uh, text block here. And uh, I'm going to cheat again because I never remember the syntax for these, uh, for these um, CSS font strings. Um, Um, it's going to, hopefully it's going to look nice and mathy. And there we go. So now we have the polynomial P and the polynomial Q. You can drag stuff from P to Q and stuff from Q to P. Um, and I think that's pretty much all I have. Um, I hope I've given you a, a taste of, of uh, Go.js and, and especially went and pure script based development using it. And um, yeah, hopefully you'll 
use the library in your future applications and um, and you'll enjoy it. I'm, I'm glad to be putting it out there. Thanks again to Frank Park Sweden who, for hosting me. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, I hope my mic is working. It seems to be working. Thank you very much again. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, it's really nice to see this come together. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been a, like a ride to get it here. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it took a while to take shape. <laughs> but uh, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the result. I hope people feel the same way. Yes, it looks really cool. Uh, we had one question in the chat. It was like, which VS Code team theme are you using? Uh, I don't even know. I, I uh, how, how do you even set set the theme again? It's something like a command. We'll a, explore it. Command no. What command K command? I uh, sorry. I don't remember. I'll have to answer you that. Uh, um, we'll check it up somehow. Uh, yeah, like what, what, theme, uh, color theme, dark high contrast. There it is. I change periodically, uh, uh, and clearly I don't remember how I do it. <laughs> so, theme is dark high contrast. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, let's see if we get any more questions in the chat. Uh, so, this uh, library works for PureScript and for Halogen. Uh, yes. Uh, so, Halogen is... Um, Basically, PureScript's answer to to um, React. Mm -hmm. It's um, I think that's a I don't think that's a mischaracterization. That's that's mm -hmm. how I interpret it. And um, this th these diagrams that you're seeing here are actually so the DOM. It's very simple, but the, is it's all being um, it's all being handled by a, a halogen component. Mm. So this one, this is this this uh, halogen code is creating the, my diagram div. It's setting the properties on the on the um, on the canvas where mm. GoJS is rendering, and uh, the only action possible is initializing, which just calls the init function that comes from mm. GoJS. Um, but yeah, it plugs right into Halogen. Yes, cool. And we will publish uh, the library uh, under some kind of uh, open source uh, thingy on the GitHub. Yep. So people can download it and uh, play around with it, use it, try it, use it for their PureScript projects, Halogen projects. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Very curious to see how that pans out. It's yes. So Andre is going to clean up, you're going to clean up the library a little bit more and then we're going to publish it uh, yep. on the GitHub. Yeah. And then we're also going to output uh, like a demo page so people can see mm -hmm. what you can do with it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're interested, we're going to do that also. Yes, uh, people are saying thanks and very cool presentation and thank you in the chat, Andrea. So again, thank you very much for coming here and presenting the library. Thanks, my pleasure. Yes, uh, with that, I would like to say thanks for tonight and thanks for this year. Uh, we've done a lot of uh, live streams and a lot of meetups this year and we're going to continue next year. So I hope you join us next year uh, and I hope we continue to find more presenters as we have done this year to come and and also i hope to find that we find more people getting interested in functional programming and that we are spreading functional programming with that said have a nice end of this year and uh, an early merry christmas and then uh, see you next year and bye for now